Hello again. Well, it's about three days later now. Another nice sunny afternoon in the woods. I've actually been camping for the last few days, which has been really good fun. Um, I left the spoon in the van to dry out, so it's now nice and dry. No problems, cracks, splits or any, any issues. This little bit of the cambium layer that we left on has dried out nicely. It doesn't smell funny or anything. There's nothing sticky or horrible about it. It's just looking rather nice. So there goes a little close up. A few kind of, see these bits that we didn't quite clean up properly have gone a little bit furry and loose. So it's time to now clean up all of these rough cuts and refine it nicely. So let's have a go at that and see what we can do. Got this um, Bodger's bib on again, the old leather. There's a bit here, which is going to help me from. Helps actually stop this skidding around too much. Gives me a little bit of control, but most importantly, stops it digging in. And before we go too much further. I'm just going to give this knife little strop See how that fares. Now I can't remember which that's better. I can't remember exactly which way around the grain was working on this, so I'm gonna to have to kind of re-establish that. But you can kind of maybe hear the difference if the camera's picking that up. It sounds totally different. And it's leaving a nice glassy smooth finish. I'm gonna try and maintain these nice long long facets but just start to say refine the cuts that we've already made now i'm going to look to follow the exact facets that i had before and then start softening the edges of those i want to keep everything in line to start with so i'm just going to stick with the exact same faces i've got Smooth. That's that handle cleaned up on the back. Just going to take these sides down a little bit. I like the shape, I'm just refining the finish.
I've brought that front face down and cleaned that up now. There's a tiny bit I've missed. There we go. All those faces that I'd already established are clean now. I've just realised actually my hands a little bit grubby. If I carry on handling this handle, now I've put some nice clean faces on it with slightly grubby hands, it's not going to bow too well. So I'm just going to give these a quick wash. dry these off a bit and we can carry on. My hands are all nice and clean now so I'm not going to transfer any of the dirt off my hands onto these nice clean finished cuts. So the handle's pretty much cleaned up. I'm just going to go about sorting out the back of the bowl now. So again I'm just going back over these facets that I've already established, blending them into the handle. And you'll find sometimes when it's when the wood's from a crook, the grain can deviate a little bit, and you might find that it kind of dries where well, you thought you'd left it fairly smooth. It feels quite bumpy. Not necessarily how you've left it. Sometimes it is just that the wood moves in different directions and creates a few lumps and bumps. But now it's dried, it should be reasonably stable, and we can smooth those out. That's done the two sides. Now I'm going to come around the back here. There's a fair bit of material there, so I'm going to take a reasonable amount off. And then from here, you can see where the grain changes direction. I can push forwards from right back here. Normally, you wouldn't get away with doing it anywhere from about there if this was from straight wood, but here, because we had that bend in the branch, I can literally come from right behind the shoulders of the bowl all the way around to the front and I'm going to again just establish this face and I'm using a thumb push here. It's a short stroke but I can put a lot of pressure down onto the cut to use the bevel of the blade as a bit of a planing surface and really guide the edge quite accurately and keep that all nicely registered with the side facets. When I've made one pass like that, I'm just going to check, looking through and rotating, that that remains horizontal all the way through and up the back of the handle, which it does. Still a fair bit of material in the back of the bowl here, so I'm going to take a bit more off the back. Same direction, just to start to take some of the weight out of that. And then I'm going to come around the sides again from the same kind of starting point. Now I've got a little bit of a little bit of tear out there. So a little trick that can sometimes come in handy there, if it will not cut in line, which from crooks sometimes it's hard to establish that, let's just work across the grain a little bit. Try and maintain the lines of that facet. And just to clean up that rough spot, I seem to have no choice but to work across the grain. Not often that happens, but around that area of the spoon, and you can sometimes we can work it from the centre of the bowl towards the rim, or sometimes you can work it from the rim back in. This one doesn't really want to cut that way, so I'm going to come from the rim back in. You can see that's actually taking quite a nice planing cut, working sideways. 
seems a bit counterintuitive. You want to follow the direction of the grain, but it could be that this grain is quite twisted here, so it hasn't got any particular direction. So you just got to work with what you've got. Theo wouldn't listen to what's happening. And don't at this stage. Obviously, you don't want to overdo it. Dig a big lump out that we can't put back. And then I'm just going to come around on the top here, trim up the top face of this rim and blend it in from the shoulders. We need to come down quite a bit here to make this comfortable and blend this in a bit further back. So I always like to establish the right curve from one side and I usually start that on this side here because I can do that working across the bowl with the tip of the blade and turn nice and tight there. And then I'll come back at it from the other side and try and mimic that using this side as a guide. The side that I've already cut, using the knife like a level to establish a plane. Just check it across ways and from the end. And now this shoulder needs to come in. So again, I'm working across the bowl. I'm trying to come in until these little shavings here just release. Now I've gone a little bit deep, so again leave some from that direction. You can see those little curls and then come back this way until we just release those without cutting back uphill again. So as I come in, in I'm just kind of Roll in the knife a little bit. I'm exaggerating that obviously, but there we go. Just caught them. One tiny little fluffy bit there. And that looks nice. Yeah, that's pretty good. A tiny little bump this side just to iron out now. Right there. And this is something that's going to be difficult to show you on camera, but I've got a nice parallel curve there, looking at it from the end, looking down the handle, all looks good, this side of the handle is a tiny tiny bit high, I'm going to come in, angle the knife slightly and just take a shaving off of that side of the handle, okay, that's nice, so the back of the bowl is good, we've got three distinct facets here now. And what I want to do, because I know I can work from right back here, I'm going to try and come through and take those off a little bit at a time, don't be greedy. And then try and work these in the same plane, just taking off an even, try and level up this third facet now, well, one, two, three to the middle, to the middle one of those three, try and make it the same as the outside one. I'm going to take a bit off this side of the middle one and just aiming to kind of equalise those but now what will be five facets is how I like to leave it and I like these to be I'm not going to be super critical about it but I like them to be quite clean so they're comfortable and reasonably even so they look quite nice but it's all a matter of judgment you could just carry on working each ridge line off until you end up with a nice smoothly rounded bowl. I find with these five facets because they're quite subtle there's not enough of a hard edge on them to be uncomfortable in the mouth. It looks quite nice so I'm quite happy to leave those behind. In fact it's a bit of a preference of mine to do that. that one in all the way back in this case sometimes I stop it around this point but because of the way this is carving I'm just going to go straight through I'm 
just cleaning up the outside shape of the bowl now holding it up against the contrasting surface there's a big oak tree in line with my eyesight here so if I hold it up against that and just shut one eye it helps me just to visualize where there's bits of wood that want to come off take a bit off check again And I'm aiming for some fairly symmetrical curves now. It'll probably end up slightly asymmetrical because I'm not a machine, but I'm going to try and keep it reasonably symmetrical now. Look at the front and from the back. If you've kept these sides of the rim upright, you shouldn't see too much discrepancy between the front view and the back view. Sometimes it can just be that you cut them at a bit of an angle so the back looks different to the front and one side looks fine and the other side looks a bit unbalanced but sometimes you just need to then straighten that cut up but that's looking all right so we've got our five facets established we've cleaned up the shape a couple of little bits of untidiness coming into the bowl there on the shoulders on the rim so i'm just going to a few gentle cuts just to clean that slightly transitional grain up you just have to experiment and find the best angle to cut from to give us a clean finish this obviously is if you want to avoid having to go to abrasives to get a smooth finish i would rather sit here messing about with the angle of the blade and getting it just nice and i would pick up a piece of sandpaper at that stage i've done most of the finishing straight knife work there's a little bit to do to take these arises off the handle and the arises off the edge of the bowl but for now I'm just going to swap over to this hollowing tool, the spoon scorp and just do a little bit more cleaning up on the inside of the bowl working from the centre of the bowl out towards the rim and this technique I'm using if you get it wrong it could be quite dangerous because obviously you're cutting in line with your forearm so if you slipped and cut your forearm it could be quite nasty because there's veins close to the surface so the way I'm making that as safe as possible is making sure my knuckles just stay in contact with my legs. I'm not putting a lot of force into these cuts but I'm using my leg to steady my hand, put some pressure into the blade with the spoon itself but not too much pressure, just enough to keep the bevel in contact and running smooth. And then you can see it's a gentle movement from one set of knuckles to the next and that to me is quite stable. The blade edge is always exiting vertically because it's got to finish in that position and I'm moving the billet around to influence what part of the wood it cuts. So that keeps me as safe as possible. And then I'm gonna work this one in this chest lever, a modified chest lever. This is where this gets in the way a little bit. I'm just gonna sling that around the side for a second. And I'm trying to use as flat a part of the curve of this blade as I possibly can so I leave less furrows and I'm just taking off the high spot with each progressive cut and trying to leave as smooth a finish as possible so as I'm approaching that finish I can take less and less timber with each cut get some really nice wafer thin well paper thin shavings and I'm trying to work to a uniform kind of rim of about two millimeters all the way around and with every cut you can try and just keep that tidy and in line and what will most probably show is I'll be looking at it like this and then I'll come and show it to the camera and I'll bet you any money when I'm reviewing the footage I'll notice little imperfections that I didn't actually see with my eye but the camera will catch it from a slightly different angle and it will stand out so with these internal shoulders of the bowl, I'm probably covering this up quite a bit with the way I'm holding everything, but 
I'm going to cut kind of from the handle around like a clock face. If the handle was at 12 o'clock, I'm going to cut from 12 to 3 and then 12 round to 9 with a bit of a roll. So I'm still technically cutting across the grain but like rolling it round the corner. There's a lot of end grain in this section of the bowl. This side's looking pretty good, just a little blending cut coming this way I think. And again, just keeping the knuckles on the leg and making sure they don't lift up or put any force coming back this way, other than the rotation of the tool. And then take, just gently manipulating the billet so that you cut where you want to. Okay, that's looking quite nice on the inside now. It's created a tiny bit of a furry edge just here so I'm going to come at this again with a straight knife and in fact it's quite a long blade and I only really want to work with the tip of it so I've got the same sort of thing but a much shorter version so I can now come around here and holding it like this I can use the tip just to come in and take those off which works quite nicely means I haven't got to hold on to the blade of that knife to come in and hold it like that and I haven't got to be working with the handle a long way away it gives me more control okay yeah I'm quite happy with that this side now I've taken a bit more for this I just need to even up this side Right, and that will do. So the only thing left to do now is just clean up these curves in the, the tip of the bowl. I can do that with this little tiny knife, it's quite sharp. It rolls around that bend quite quickly and cleanly. Flip it over and do the same on this side just to smooth that radius out. And then very gently just come across this end grain and try and take the finest shaving possible really delicate fine little shavings just to clean up that end grain yeah we're nice and now got a hard edge hard sharp edge on the tip of the bowl here so I'm going to just drop the handle of the knife a little bit come across there and just bevel that out so I'm rolling the knife through the cut. Clean that up. Then I am going to come around the where I was cutting the rim fairly flat. I'm now going to angle the knife and just take that hard edge off just to make that comfortable. And again, just take a very light experimental cut and see which direction the wood wants to cut. You quite often get away with coming forwards on this without it hanging up or digging in. And it's only taking a minute amount of timber away, but it does just make it comfortable. Sometimes I just sort of steady the knife on my leg and pull the, the spoon itself through that cut. I can guide it quite nicely with the handle. The grain changes direction near the tip here for some reason. I'm just going to come at that from the other end, coming it from this side. There's lots of different ways we can do this, but you've got to just find what's right for the piece of timber you're working with. And if it's come from a crooked billet, there are no real 100% rules that I can give you that is going to behave in a certain way because each tree's different, each crook's different, which is why they're such a good fun challenge to carve with. Now I just want to soften these parts of the handle 
So I'm going to come in from where this colour stops, just bevel that down, preferably picking up the right thickness shaving, tend to taper it towards the neck so it gets slimmer and then we can just come through with a sweeping cut from these shoulders, pick up where we left off the first one and roll that through, creep up on that first lot until there. There's a little bit of fluff left behind. So coming down again from the point where the colour stops, get rid of some material, then pick up the right thickness shaving taper it out blend it this way and there we go nice smooth transition there feels pretty comfy in the hand still a little bit hard on these edges on the back perhaps so let's just knock them off I think that's about it. Can reasonably clean. I'm just using the benefit of the sunlight here, just to pick up. There's a couple of little bits where the grain's conflicted. You just got to use your eyes and your fingertips just to see and feel if there's any bits that just need a little bit more attention because what we're aiming to do is finish on a nice clean knife cut we don't want to have to use abrasives to soften these edges if we can help it it'll be much more durable if we can just use the knife and get that to leave a clean finish So there we go, I think I'm going to call it a day. Oh, end of the handle. Nearly forgot that. Again, there's some re all I've done is followed the facets. So I'm going to bevel these off, following the facets I've got. Take a slice off of each at a tangent to the facet. And that will just give us a nice clean look to the end of the handle, hopefully. So I always do the sloping kind of diagonally cross grain cuts first so it gives you the, the minimum surface area to do the end grain cut which is always going to be the trickier one. And there we go. So there we go, the finished article. Hopefully you can see these little compression ripples in the bowl. But this turned out quite nice, I think. I'm quite pleased with that. It's gonna be a nice, comfortable eating spoon. It's comfortable in the hand. It's gonna be comfortable in the mouth because I've already tried that before I did the finishing cuts. Um, so yeah, looking forward to getting a coat of oil on that and seeing how it fares. But for now, thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon.